Forest, fancy meeting you here. No, I'm joking. Uh, welcome to uh, <laughs> to this episode of um, Stevie does crazy shit in the bush. No, I'm joking. Um, pretty much, here I am down Northern Wilderness. Um, so we're going to get down here, uh, get camp set up tonight. We're going to be looking at the top, putting a top system up and stuff like that. Um, probably get a couple of videos out this one session actually. But I think a bit of a wild camp, no one around, total solo. I'm thinking. Roast gammon on a spit made of hazel, smoked with some nice oak smoked wood. I'm thinking on the side of that, a food that divides everybody, pineapple, slightly cooked with halloumi and chorizo on small hazel skewers as a side serving. I'm thinking that should be quite nice. I'm on pretty much a, a low carb diet at the minute so I'm trying to keep me carbs down which is odd for being in the woods kind of thing but I'm trying to keep carbs down but so I'm, I'm kind of on the meat this weekend uh, a bit of cheese bit of meat plenty of water and uh, yeah we'll go from there and see how it gets on but anyway I've better gotta go get camp set up and uh, yeah we'll get sorted from there so let's have a look I had to go all the way back to the car forgot the essentials water the only thing I don't put in my pack is my water Here's one for you. Setting up camp. This is like my bed. Hands on a postcard. What tree is this from? <laughs> Literally just in comments below, not really a postcard. What tree is it from? Here's one for you. See it's coming up there. Is this safe to drink in tea? See how many guys out there watching and can identify. Oh heaven. Really, really smell strong pine. Obviously, I knew what to pine, I'll give you that bit, but <laughs> answers on a postcard, guys. Literally, or just below in the comments. Let us know what you think. Well, bloody hair, I need a haircut. It's popping out like a mad professor, it's everywhere. Crazy blonde mad hair. Anyway, top. Uh, sorry, hammock. Um, I'll just put that guy up there. Um, so he's up so I can have a look. Now what I want to do is because the bed's below us, I don't want to be too low down because I'll be like lying on the wooden frame. So I want to be kind of high so I'll adjust it in a bit, but this is what I've got. Da, da, da. Here we go. DD super light top and um he's tiny. Um I'm gonna insert a clip now from when I was at home so you can see just what it was like next to the original. How cool is that? That is loads of space saving size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this um, sorted. Uh, have a look at it. It's out brand new in the pack and never been out. So hopefully it goes down the same way when we finish with it. But we'll see what it's like from DD. Top's up. I really like it. Um, I definitely agree that it needs some sort of stretchy elastic bits for the end. Just some small loops. Just attached to it so it's got a little bit of pull. Just when the wind gets Because I've noticed I've pulled it quite tight. And it doesn't feel... <laughs> it might be strong but it doesn't feel the strongest. Um, for long term use, but this is where I've done my shelter today. Get the hammock out now, and just quick test of that. That'll work splendiferous. That'll work, so I'm going to carry on getting this set up. If you haven't seen my videos on how I do my setup for my hammock and stuff, then watch my DD um, one with the under blanket, the DD Frontline XL, which hammock I'm using, uh, the DD 3x3 top. That there is an ideal beginner kit. Well, that's the hammock setup. Uh, mosquito nets up because I've got muzzies all over and the only can hear is I hate mosquitoes anyway it's crazy because I remember the time I'm pretty sure in the UK we never used to have mosquitoes I can't remember them when I was a kid like cannot remember them at all but uh get this bad boy blown up yeah nine a little bit this is kind of I like this map this air map for the price of it but then again, I've never tested any more expensive mats. You've seen this in my other videos, it's my little review or if you like on it, but that's going inside my kit now. New little bit of kit I got. It's the Teton 
sport, Tet and Sport uh, Campillo. I went for the one in like the woodland checkered kind of woodsman colour. I think quite nice. I really like this little pillar. I've not used it properly, uh, so I will see what I say. But I like the stuff, sacking stuff. Uh, a couple of compression straps, and that is like, you know what I mean? It's going to be tiny. But boom. I'll give it a shake. It's down as well. Removable cover as well, so it can be all washed. Oh, went a bit of focus there. Yeah, removable cover so it can get all nice and washed and clean. Stop smelling like fire and just dirt. Um, oh, yes. Mm. It's not a bad sized pillar, that. I mean, if you look, you can see that. Inside a hammock, perfect. If you line a flat bed, I would probably recommend two of these. But yeah, I'll uh, get this inside there and we'll have a look at the sleeping bag I've got as well. Check out this little bad boy. <laughs> How small is that? Yeah, I've put a couple of com um, compression straps on, so it didn't come with one. I got this from Black's in the Metro Centre in Gateshead. And it was maybe 140 or 170, no, 170, and I got it for 65 pounds, I believe. I think I got 65 pounds. So it just didn't do it. It's a down sleeping bag. I believe this is Goose Down, I think, or something like that. Um, and I do really like it. I used it twice at the moot, uh, two nights. Um, second night I was a little bit cold, but that was because I didn't have my sleeping bag liner. And I would. This is recommended to be rated to a three season. Uh, if you look on here. I laugh at the season ratings. In size it says goes down to minus 10 has been tested. Down to minus 10, and it's mine. But that is roughly the area there where it's comfortable. It says... Uh, between 5 and 10 Celsius, so it gets between below 5. I felt it cold at around about 8 Celsius. It's a three seasons bag, but you can change that just by simply adding a bivy to it. Um, the snug pack bivy by all accounts is maybe super light, so I think I'm going to get one of those guys. Have a go like that one. It's going to my light kit, but I love blue. I'm a surfer, as you might have seen by some of you. see my um, surfboards in the background and stuff. Let's take these out here. But I really like this. It's blue, it's got a zip pocket inside. Um, Obviously it comes down to storing it, again, making sure you store correctly with these. You want to hang them when they're not in use. Um, it's got a zip all the way up and down, side zip on this obviously. Nice big hood, um, I'm quite a large lad and it works on me. The zip is a really good zip, I really like the zip actually. The zip's got this like puller on it, yeah. Um, I have pop stud on the top bit, so there's the hood area, there's a pop stud. And obviously that zips down inside of here. Just to keep you reminded, <laughs> the, there's the rating, and there's a zip. There it is. And get it. The zip pocket right there. It's quite a decent size zip pocket. Big enough for your mobile phone, car keys, wallet, things like that. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. I love this kit, and uh, it's really, it is warm for what it is. But it is, a, it is a summer really, early or early late spring, early summer all the way through to probably early autumn but once it starts getting dipping past you know at night times um dipping past like four maybe five celsius i reckon you feel it in this but at a sleeping bag liner you should be pretty good um inside a hammock and stuff like that for under blanket stuff you'd be absolutely sound like but um i would change that for winter a few of you guys have asked us about me candles so i thought show you while well, keeping my light pack and stuff obviously my torch you've seen this in the other video probably but this is the candle i use you can get replica ones this one's a it's a mark hill a mark hill outdoor equipment uh, this works with the uco candles uh, you can get uco versions i got this one second hand on ebay um sorry on facebook i think i paid like a tenner for two of them one didn't have a glass and one did and i paid about two quid for some glass and it's got like it expands like that it's got a little hook on there, citronella candles. It's got on this side here, it's got a little glass you can see how far the candle's got to go. Um, tells the instructions, unscrew the bottom of a spring loaded mechanism to keep the candle in so you can burn them down. And of course I've got a spare citronella candle as well. So we'll get him set up. Got my gloves, got to leave camp for a couple minutes because I'm going to go and get some hazel. I know there's a hazel tree around here. Um, so I'm going to go down and get a bit of hazel for tonight's uh, roasting of the gammon. Um, I've got some wood already over there stored. And uh, yeah, we'll get that sorted, get a fire on the go, get the food cooking for tea later on. It's now nearly four o'clock in the afternoon. Got here quite late. Um, 
So I've been here about half an hour now. So yeah, we'll go and get that sorted now. I'm off to get a hazel tree. I am, because we've got some hazel through here. And if you haven't seen my video on hazel, check it out, watch it. Hazel is used for many different things. Different things. Um, I'm going to be using it to make a roast, a spit roast, so I can uh, roast some gammon. So yeah, let's have a check that out. Let's go and find this tree. Okay. Well, here we've got the hazel tree. Back on Laplander. So, it's not the most ideal bit of hazel, but I've got this natural fork on it. Uh, and I use this to put the do the meat. So I'm just going to trim them down now. Cut at an angle, um, and that way the tree's got more chance of healing um, and it won't die off. And that should work. What I'll do is I'll sharpen these to a point, and this will put that through the meat, and I've got something to rotate it on then. Right, I was quite pleased with the day because I was on YouTube and I seen a video. I was actually by Paul Kirtley and I've been preaching for bloody ages that you didn't want to use fern for anything. And I've had people come up with a seed on like Lofty Wiseman's um, survival courses and his videos and things like that and other people, not just him, but loads of other people, not calling him out by the way, but loads of other people. And yeah, it could be used in an emergency situation survival to, to cover your shelter and stuff with, but what's the problem with it? The problem I see with it is the fact that one, it harbors ticks, loads of bloody ticks, and ticks harbor Lyme disease, which can totally destroy your life, um, which is a major issue. Another thing is, is that it cuts your bloody fingers to bits. It compresses really quickly, so if you want to lie on it and try and make some sort of bed, it's cold as damp it's just it's just pointless really for a survival situation make a roof out of it maybe if you had gloves um, but even then I can think of other things to use it but fern isn't great like it's not good at all I would avoid it at all costs I even hate walking through it because ticks hang on it because it's where deers and other things pass so yeah watch fern right guys well I'm back at base camp um, just getting the uh, hazel here obviously I want to make a spit with this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of the bark off maybe the ends and I'll probably thin it out a little bit. Um, take some of the bits off it just so I can nip it. And basically I'm going to use this as a prong and put the meat somewhere in this area. So I'll leave just a small amount on this side here. So I'll take some of this off and uh, yeah, then I can just put it in the roaster. Get this guy shaved up to a good point so I can get the meat on no problem. Get the bark off. You want the bark off because obviously that's where the bacteria is. Um, you just want to keep going until you get it all the way down to the white to so where you're going to be placing the meat. It doesn't have to all be done, just the bits where the meat's going to be touching. Hazel, watch my video if you're not seeing it. It's the green wood. I like this wood. It's good for cooking with. I'm going to dismantle my fireplace and start doing it there. Let's pull it all out. I'm going to rebuild the fireplace in there now. in the ass, getting that level, putting some bricks around the edges of it. I'll show you it's finished properly, putting the grill in there. So I've got this area here, it's going to be for the grill, so it's going to be the fire. Got a little spit area there and pot hanging point there. I'll build the back section up when I can find more rock. Um, and then yeah, that should be pretty cool. I've got a little area there for firewood and stuff like that. I've got plenty of wood. So yeah, let's uh, light the fire. Alright guys, you've probably seen me do this loads of times before. I've just got loads of little bits of pine to start my fire off with. Um, to get out in the wilderness, pine's ideal to start fires with. Just going to get some here, small bits of my hand. You want it so it snaps, you want to be able to hear it actually break. So, I'll just give it a test. Snaps, and snaps like a <coughs> noise. Happy days. I'm going to get these bundles next to me here. So, I've got plenty of them. They work. I want to use birch bark to light it with, and a ferrocium rod. Age one. Now stage two and stage three next to that. Cut the rest of it. The floor in here, I've got wood laying down on the bottom of it. That way I'm stopping the moisture, the damp. Basically I've got some just bits of rubbish I found in the wood. I'm just going to burn that, leave it on the side there so it's a bit damp. It'll work. I'm going to make a cross section like this, a V. Got my bundles sorted, I'll show you them in a minute when I get them on. Put two sticks like this. On there, 
and one there so I can lift them up and let them air under if I need to. Basically there's a birch bark on the birch tree. I've done a video on this, you'll have to watch that if you're not, if you're unsure. I'm not going to go through st step by step in each video I do. I'm just going to scrape this off, get as much dust up out of it as I can. If you've seen this before guys, fire steel, knife, uh, get edge on it. Gives you a good old spark. Some more bits here. Just gonna get this pulled up. Get some creases in it. So it doesn't curl on itself hopefully. And try and stop it from curling. And then I've got my stage one to go on straight after that, we'll see. See if that takes and uh, we shall fire. Some bits of wood I chopped earlier on, just some tiny bits from the pine I had. So, pine's a good fast burning fire wood, pops a bit, spits, so you'll be careful next to your tops. Um, as you can see, I've got a good foot away from it, so I let this burn down just a little bit. Massive resinous knot. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Oh, that'll get your fire going. I'll tell you how that now. When you finish with your axe, I always put the blade down into the wood. That way, you don't get hurt with it if you're not using your sheath. Looks pretty damn cool like that. Gotta say. Really does. Anyway, let's uh, get this fire finished so I can get some more food on the go. Eh? Take a side steak and then find a sweet spot and have at it and just push them through the meat out to the side till you feel them coming through them right down up there good you see there's a bit of a tear but not too much I was going to tie this off with some cord on the end and uh, we got to go from there pulled apart a little bit but that's him ready now to go on the spit Fire should say. So let's get him on the fire. That gammon. <laughs> Some spit roast there. And there. <laughs> oh, it's cooking good. Really nice. Bit of a little seat. Did just in case, you know. Sit by the fire. Sitting that side, but it gets a bit smoky with the way the wind's blowing at the minute. That's what it's about, man. Oh, as, as Dodsy from North East Bushcraft would say, it's where it's at. <laughs> Over the moon, just sitting chilling out. That's what it's about, man. Just getting in the woods. The sun's still out a little bit. I've got this, I'll show you in a minute. Let's go spin this. Oh. This little bit of kit. Stanley flask. They might have showed you one of my other videos, but if I haven't, this is it. It flips off here, the full top opens up. If you haven't got a drink inside and it's bone dry in there, you can store your mobile phone inside it if you're on a river raft. Documents, money, whatever you need to store inside it. But it just looks like a normal flask. Uh, well, it is a normal flask. Uh, it's got rubber seal inside, but the first one I got, the seal was missing, so it leaked all of my kit. I wasn't happy about that. And of course, just unscrews. You can see that, it unscrews and that comes up. Oh, toffee vodka. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, oh, 
by the way, just in case you want to know broad daylight, it's just gone five past seven in the evening. Um, I've got that to sit around the fire with and sip slowly a bit later on. Oh yes, you know, I like me toffee vodka. Over the moon with that bit there. So anyway, I'm going to sit back, enjoy the fire, and I'll catch you guys in a minute when it's time to get the halloumi on, um, and we'll go from there. Let's take a drop of water to cook with. Put that. So I've added water, that stops from sticking. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to toss all the pineapple in here and the juice. Ooh, Spanish seasoning. Bit of chilli, main chilli chilli. Spice it. Cut this up. I'm done. Seasoned it, basically put the put in some water, and I've got two of these. Now these are just exactly what they would have used during the American Civil War for food plates, they're just pie plates. 199 for two of them. The little clips that you've seen in my other video, if you haven't seen it, watch my kid video what I carry. And the idea is if I want to I can just flip it like that and uh, I can cook it both sides. So we'll get this guy cooked. Right, let's have a quick look at this terrazzo and everything. Just took it off the, the grill there. All the coals are on the grill. Under the clip, careful that you don't burn your fingers off. Now this might be a bit stuck, but often does that. Here it is. Make the sale. Yeah, man. I can see that. There we go. That'll do me. Gum's looking pretty good, so we'll get that off and uh, slice it up, bad boy, see what it's looking like. Release that nice gumming. Well, uh, just gonna pierce them. Ooh, aye, hot, right the way through. <laughs> um, I don't know if you see what I did there. Basically, took the knife, stuck it all the way inside the middle of them, took it out, touched my tongue. If you burnt your tongue slightly, then yeah, it's cooked. So that's really good. Now I'll get this served up. Good. Oh, look at that. Lovely. Nothing quite like campfire gammon. It's lovely. Enough for you to feed a small tribe. Eat like a Viking. Couldn't eat it straight like this. <laughs> eat like a Viking. Oh, that's pretty good, that. Oh, I'm happy with yours. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll your share. And if you excuse me people, I'm gonna get some food on. So I'll call this. Pineapple. Chili. Oh. Spanish spices, lovely. Chorizo. Oh yeah, over chorizo. And gammon. Oh it's so it's salty but it's nice. Uh-huh. Cheers. I'm going to finish my food and then uh, yeah, we'll see what happens when uh, the lights get low. It is quarter to nine. That sun sounds beautiful. Looking forward to getting a bed night and sleeping I'm tired. Been a busy day. But uh, put another wall in over the back. There you go, I stuck another wall in there. Just to block that end off, uh, so I can put some storage and things like that in there. This uh, toilet is this tent pillar. Absolutely lush like. There we go, it is. That's it, that's a tent pillow. Super nice, super nice. Got a bit of a blocked nose because of the smoke. Always gets my nose blocked. 
I'm feeling a bit tired now though, it's been one of them, it's been a long day today, I've done loads off camera. Yeah, I think I'm going to bed down soon, see what the night brings. Anyway guys, I'll, uh, I'll probably catch you in the morning, or I might catch you during the night, depends if any action occurs, such as any wild animals, anything like that. Okay, right, night! Well, let's get this bad boy back in this little sack. Quite tra quite quite happy with this. Um, super light. But there we go. That's with the extra guy ropes on it that I put on, as well as the two carabiners. It's all squashed down inside of there. So happy days with that. Remember guys, whatever you carry in, carry back out with you. Right guys, it's me sorted. Remember guys, leave no trace but knowledge. Till next time. Thank you.